Look at out of their shame. Hello, my name is David. Hello, his name is Shane. So you guys know Shane. Shane's been around for a good while. Shane's a, a big sci-fi fan. Shane has a... Uh, he's in Arkansas. He's got a radio show that he does on Saturdays at 1 Central or... I believe it, yeah, I believe it's 1 Eastern or 2 Central, right, Shane? Something like that? I think I, I'm missing your audio. I think you have, might have it muted, Shane. Do you have it muted? You know what? I did have it muted. Zoinks! I was listening to your Smashing Pumpkins. And oh, I didn't really? Wanna have, I didn't have to want to have the Twitch channel and the other stuff doubling up in my earphones. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it's at 1 o'clock um, on Saturday afternoons out of Little Rock, Arkansas. It's actually at 105 because um, they the station plays all their news and all this stuff. So uh, I Razorback told you about, football. Uh, little Razorback <laughs> football. God. Yeah. And you can't live in Arkansas without being a... a a, at least a, a tertiary kind of hogs fan. It's just in the air. Yeah. So I'm not even into football. Never have been. But I mean, I've I've got a soft spot for the hogs. Like put it this way, uh, I'm not joking. This sounds cheesy, but it was actually really cool. They called the hogs at my dad's funeral. That's how big of a hogs fan he was. Really? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm not oh. lying. So and you'd think it was totally cheesy, but it was actually pretty cool. No, so, hell no. Yeah. yeah. Now, nah, but man, in Arkansas, when it's the fall. And the weather's crisp, and the hogs are winning. It, it doesn't get a whole lot. Better Life is that. good. Yeah, just everyone's in a good mood. Free yeah, hot dogs, free tacos yeah. at noon for everyone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah, I think that's the governor. I think that's the governor's new initiative. Oh my so. gosh, well, that's cool, man. So, tell us a little bit what you do on your show. You know, what kind of uh, what kind of guests you have, what your topics and stuff. I, I was on there quite a few months ago, and then uh, last month I had to miss because of uh, a procedure that my mother had to have. One of her leads right. came off. Man, yeah. that that has been a mess, and 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 she's just now getting done. She actually got a staph infection from the incision of that, and yeah. uh, man, it's just horrible. Well, first of all, I'm glad you know. Even though it's been kind of up and down, I'm glad she's doing better. I remember mm -hmm. we were about to go on the air yep. um, with, is it Doug Davidson? It was Doug, yeah, Doug. Yeah, yeah from um, Fantasy Grounds. Yep. And you were, like messaged me and said, I'm not going to be able to make it. So Doug yep. you know, Doug and I kind of yep. continued. But, uh, yeah, we'll have you on again. Yeah. Uh, cool. I've enjoy I enjoyed having you on a while back. You know, it's radio goes so quick. Just like right when you're starting to get into the meat of things, it's like you have to wrap the show. Oh, I know. Um, I was like, man, yeah. it's already over. Holy crap. Yeah, it's like, wow. There's like, like in like you have bullet time in the Matrix, like that slow motion. The radio time is a complete opposite. It just speeds up by like ten, yeah. a factor of ten. Um, Especially when no, you love doing it, and then it makes yeah, it go even that much faster. And I, and I can yeah. tell you enjoy doing it. So. I love doing it. Yeah, I've definitely got the radio bug. It's in my blood. Uh, That's right. I've got the radio announcer's yeah. voice. <laughs> <laughs> the the hundred thousand watt blowtorch of the mid south, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh man, you need to do that more often. So, did they yeah. ever have you like throwing records? I mean, I know there's no more records and everything's different. No. Did, did you have anything like that, or no? I did a uh, a, a morning zoo kind of show uh, a year ago for a while, and that's what nice. kind of one thing led to another. They're like, hey, you, you know, you know. Uh, you you kind of know pop culture and you like being on the radio and and you're you know politics and all this stuff. So why don't you come be on our uh, co-host on our morning zoo show? And it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Nice. And then the uh, yeah, I loved it. I hate getting up early, but I would spring out of bed at four in the morning to run and do that. And wow. uh, and uh, but anyway, the station uh, Salem Communications, which is this huge corporate conglomerate, bought out the station, and and the morning show didn't make the jump. So but anyway, that. I'd loved. I had a lot of uh, experience going on as a guest for various reasons on different people's radio shows, and then I did that morning show, and I really got bit by the bug. I was like, I just absolutely love this. But yeah. what I do on Saturdays with Shane plays is uh, it's it's geek talk radio, uh, awesome. and as far as I know, nobody else is doing it. I mean, maybe some of the larger markets, um, you know, maybe New York City or something, in the California, you know, L.A., but. There's nobody, as far as I know, in the South doing 
geek talk radio uh and it's straight up talk radio and and i'm doing it because one i love radio but two you know there's there's all kinds of political talk radio there's fine you know you can find financial talk radio (laughs) yeah political talk radio i went on a guy's show today for about an hour and a half and we were talking politics and then we started talking about the geek movies that are out right now um you can find like religious talk radio but there's in sports talk radio and that's it there i I never turn the dial and somebody's talking about hey have you heard about this new computer role-playing game or what about the new edition of dungeons and dragons or uh you know hey the flat you know the flash just got renewed or any of that you don't hear any of that so that's what i'm doing and uh you know, I usually, the first part of the show, I usually have a news segment where I talk about geek news that you're not going to hear on the radio anywhere else. And then I have, um, I have guests come on. You know, I've had, I had you come on. We were talking about doing virtual tabletops and, you know, role-playing games online. Uh, last week I had Steve Jackson Games on talking about GURPS. Uh, I've had, you know, uh, Monty Cook Games on talking Numenera. I've had Chris Perkins on a couple of times. Uh, from Wizards of the Coast, I've you know I I've had I've got coming up um, the guys from Baldur's Gate, Sage of Dragonspear, that that new ver- you know the yeah. new expansion. That's I'm having them on. I'm talking with In Exile to have the torment you know Tides of Numenera people on. So, but I also have like yes. comic book. I had a guy who's got a PhD and teaches comic books. I've had him on. Uh, you name it. I mean, if it's geeky, it goes. Yeah, so that's good. that's, that's yeah. the name of the show, man. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, it's good, and uh, you know I appreciate you know I've, uh, one of the things I like to do with my show is when I find interesting people I don't I don't care if everybody in the world knows who they are you know I want to I want to build up interesting relationships so that's like what I did with you I reached out I was yeah. like hey man come on the show and we had fun you yeah. know so, no I agree yeah. totally yeah. that's cool man I like uh I've actually listened to quite a few of the podcasts there there was one where Have we you? had yeah. Uh, there was another podcast that you had on there, and there were three guys talking about all the old digital video games and stuff like yeah. that. <laughs> that 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 was interesting. Fra- those guys, that's fragments of silicon. Yeah, that's it. And, fragments of and silicon. And those guys yeah. are nuts. They're like, I mean, they make me like on their geekiness level. They made me look like I'm like you know some cor- Dr. Phil guy yeah. with it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, they are like way down deep geeky. <laughs> But yeah, there. Uh, that's Adam Dayton and those guys. It's um, it's uh, fragments of silicon, and they that's what they specialize in is just video games, yeah. and they'll go deep, uh, and you know they're a lot of fun. And I I, I talk to Adam almost all the time on Facebook, yeah. and he he's one of the cool things about geeky stuff uh, is him and I have nothing in common other than. Geeky the shit. geeky stuff, yeah, but exactly. when it comes to geeky, yeah. man, we're like we're like brothers. We're like you know fist bumping. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, yeah. But those guys, if you, you they're uh, and and the way they do theirs is on talk show, which is uh, it's it's stream live. So they do their show live, but you listen to it on talk show, not yeah. like on the on the radio or whatever. The so. banter they and, had between one another was pretty funny. It was kind yeah, of like no, they classic. were kind of like getting on each other's nerves and stuff but yeah. that's yeah. entertaining man that's no, the whole they're totally classic. yeah that's yeah. the great part yeah. about it and the stuff like they'll be like what's new with you this week well my bed broke and i've got it you know <laughs> or i've got the city's mad at us because of our lawns oh yeah that's things. right yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah those guys good. are great yeah that those guys good. are great um so yeah i listen to them pretty often um it's it's like I said, it's fragments of silicon. But speaking of podcasts, what I do with my show is it is live, and I do that on purpose uh, for the interactivity. So I mean, I've gotten calls, you know, especially if I have uh, certain like Star Trek. When I have Star Trek continues, I've had them on twice. I yeah. get calls from Canada and California and all over. I had a I had a call I think from New Mexico when I had GURPS on. So even though it's a local channel, it's a ninety six five FM in Little Rock. Uh, it streams simultaneously through the station's website, and I put I, I really promote that. Yeah. And there's people all over the place listening. So anybody that's in the chat right now, I mean, you know, they can listen live. They can call in. They can tweet me. Uh, you know, I have people tweet at me, and I respond to it during the show. Yeah. Um, so it's it's you know, it, and then it goes out as a podcast, so people can subscribe to the podcast uh, and and get the show if they can't listen to it live. So. Yeah, it's, it's good that. The best thing is you have the support of the station behind you doing all of this. That's like the best thing about it. 
So yeah, no, it's cool. They in in fact, uh, they really have worked with me a lot because it, it they want to have diversity in their programming. Yeah. So to have like this isn't just yet another political show. It's not just another you know, ask the car guy kind of show. Not that there's anything wrong with those, right? Not to do, not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> Radio but, flea market shows we yeah, have them here exactly. in Titusville. Woo! Yeah, but it's so, you know, it's unique. So they've really worked with me uh, to make it happen. So. That's cool, man. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's even like you had you had like a like engineers working for you and stuff. I was going, whoa, they're like, yeah, no, Shane's got it going on over there. No, it's a full on studio. I mean, there's a producer. I mean, you got to go. In, you got to go into the uh, the studio and do that, or or do you have to, or do they? No, I go into the studio. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, it's yeah, even I'll, better I'll, yet. Yeah, no, I'll get in the. I'll head out there tomorrow and sit down and and get fired up. So that's awesome, man. That's cool. Yeah, Tell that's everybody cool. one more time, man. Tell, what time? Uh, it's when and where? Yeah, it's. Uh, I'll post again. It, I just posted the link in the chat, but you can go to shameplays. dot com. In fact, let me post the direct show link, the show info page. Right. Um, but it's it's at one p.m. Central on Saturdays. That's when it's live, and then it will go out as a podcast, usually within two or three days after the show. Very cool, man. And then, uh, and I occasionally push. Um, like I interviewed uh, this guy, he was on my show. He was a PhD, he teaches comic books in college, nice. and we were like, "Hey, there's a whole lot more information here." So we just sat down about a week and a half ago, and I recorded almost two hours of stuff with him, talking about what makes comics unique as a medium, like mm-hmm. psychologically, what's unique about comic books. Uh, and then we also talked about Will Eisner, who's a major, you know, one of the pioneers of comic books. So I'm gonna, I, I'm I'm gonna put that out as a podcast, and that didn't even go on my radio show. Yeah, so nice. you know, there's there's a lot of content, um, you know, just if people want to subscribe to the podcast. So very cool, man. So yeah. speaking about comic books, do you think that comic books are kind of on the way out. I'm not saying on the way out. I'm I'm saying from a physical standpoint, having the paper comic book in your hand, you know, you can get a a digital copy of it. Do you think do you think the the more physical copies are starting to 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 be on the way out? Uh I'll give you the um the answer that I hope to see and then the answer that I think is going to happen mm-hmm. uh, I hope not because I love a tactile something in my hand mm-hmm. um, you know and there's something about being over at a friend's house and you find it on their coffee table and pick it up and you're like oh and you never would have seen it otherwise same thing with yeah. RPG books I, I think it's cool that there's all these RPG versions of books or PDF versions of RPG rule books but I want if possible the physical thing now publishers and distributors are going to keep trying to push it more and more to digital because mm-hmm. it's cheaper on their oh, end yeah. at the end of the day. Um, so that's what I think they're going to keep trying to do. But it's just like uh, you would you would think in this day and age that bookstores would be going away, but they're not. You know, there's still people want to go there's browse. There's a few out there, yeah. Uh, yeah, people want to. In fact, I've I've read statistics that there's that the print is kind of making a little bit of a comeback. So. I think that they're that the digital comic books are going to reach a certain percentage of the market, say thirty, forty percent, and then it'll kind of stay there. Is yeah. what I think what's because some people want a digital comic book, you know, uh, but I don't, you know, um, I, I want I want if possible I want the actual comic book in my hand. Yeah. Um, so, but it, there's it's it's going to grow, you know. Um, it, it's going to keep growing. Now, that answer is assuming that we're talking the traditional comic book. Because what they're doing now is they're taking the the traditional 22-page stapled comic book and they're converting it to where you can read it on your computer. Oh, when yeah. they start when they when they start publishing, like when Marvel and DC and these other publishers start printing digital comic books or making digital comic books that cannot be reproduced on the printed page and gives you a unique digital experience, those will take off like a rocket. Uh. Uh, and there's already a little bit of that going on. Um, 
and there's a there's like a Japanese or Korean format for comic books. I, I've mm. just recently heard about it the past month or so that can only be done digital the way that it's doing. They, like you cannot reproduce what they're doing online on a printed page, and that's like super incredibly huge in Korea right now. Wow. So. Yeah. So you can't like take the copy. You can't copy paste the the PDF or anything like that. Then. Right. It's a huh. unique experience. Uh, the best the best example that I can give of something that would Pretty be cool. unique. Yeah, and I'll give a quick example of something that would be unique to online versus printed. I don't know if you know Scott McCloud or not. In the '80s, he did Zot. He was kind of an independent publisher. Well, he wrote a book called Understanding Comics, and it kind of became a um, a textbook for comic books, if you will. Well, he did another one called Reinventing Comics, talking about how to how do we use digital technology for comic books. And he and he did. You can still find it. I'll see if I can find the link and put it in the chat. And it's um, he did a digital comic to show how you could do a comic book in a web browser using all this stuff that you could never do on the printed page. Uh-huh. And it was really cool. So, like I said, that. That might take off, but I yeah. don't think that the the traditional comic book as we know it will ever completely go away. Probably just get more expensive. Yeah, that's probably what I was thinking. The numbers will go down, of course. The price will go up. So, see, I I collect I collect postage stamps from all around the world. So I know it's geeky. It's geek talk, man. You know what I mean? So yeah, no, it's geeky. Uh, it, it is pretty geeky. You know, when I go to a, a stamp show or something, I'm I you know I'm in, I'm in my forties, so. I'm 40 years younger than the average collector, you know. And all, when all those codgers die off, I really see that that hobby really in a decline. I mean, b- when I was a kid, stamp shows a would be of, really, a really, 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 yeah. When I was growing up, it was age, big I, in yeah, the was, 60s, 70s, and 80s. But it's yeah. Who wants to buy a hundred dollar stamp book or a two hundred dollar you know stamp book when you can get a video game for forty bucks or you can get an right. iPod or something like that and you know, kids just don't want to get into it because of the, the t- I think, the technology that we have now. I yeah, I'm not sure. Stamps, like, uh. co- coin collecting and stamp collecting used to be really big. No, because coin collecting still is for the silver value. Now, anything that's, you know, anything that's got silver in it, yeah, that's always going to be big. But I'm just talking just plain stamp collecting. Mm. It'll never die, I, but it's, I, it's just I remember, not what it was. It used to be referred to a lot more. I was born in 72. And uh, so I, I basically grew up in the 80s. And, yeah. you know, a lot of people collected stamps. You yeah, know, like uh, you'd go to the store and most stores would have stamp albums and stuff like yeah. that. So, yep. yeah. No more. Yep. Well, yeah, I guess things change. Hobby store. Uh, hobby, like like a hobby store. They may have something basic, but, yeah. All right. Well, I think that's pretty cool, actually. So, all right, I'm going to post a link in the chat room right now which shows this Scott McCloud's online Zot comic where he yeah. showed like the uniqueness of a comic book in a web browser. Yeah. And he did this in the early 2000s. So keep in mind that you know there's a lot newer technologies in web browsers now that he wasn't even using. Yeah. Uh, I see a couple of comments in the chat. Let's see. Till there's a solid, clean, easy on the eyes color reader, it will be a very slow shift. LCD is crud for reading, and that's from Light and Passion. I agree with you, Light and Passion. So that's another thing. Monitors, and now if you're using a Kindle, it's different. I'm not talking about Kindles and e-readers. I'm talking about iPads and most of your tablets, your phones, and your monitors. Those are transmissive displays, which means they transmit light, your eye receives it, and it wears your eye out over time. E-ink is reflective, just like a real printed page, so it's much easier on the eyes. So I agree with you. If they can, if they can find a, a, a monitor technology that is color, but is is reflective rather than transmittive, I agree with you that, that it'll take up more. Um, and then Skunk City said, "Are you referring to Comic Mad?" I don't know. I don't know if that's where I. But I, I, I th- I'm assuming he's talking about those Korean comics that I was talking about. So, um, anyway, I can look that up real quick. I have a so. couple of boxes of comics from the late '80s and, and early '90s. I have all of the Advanced Dungeons and Dragons comic books, of course. I think there was like 21 of them or something like that. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, I got those off the. Um, a humble bundle 
And again, it's like it's cool to have them, but I don't enjoy reading them on my tablet. No, I mean I actually have the the, the have real, the real books. Ones, right? Yeah, yeah oh yeah, I I, yeah, yeah. I have. I I they're not they're not expensive either, man. They're they're pretty cheap. I think you could probably pick up the whole set on eBay, free shipping for about fifteen twenty bucks. But yeah, yeah, they were telling. Um, well, I'll tell you one thing I liked about those comic books that that I discovered when I was reading the PDF versions I got through Humble Bundle. At the end of the comic book, they would give adventure notes or stats for the monsters and stuff that were in the comic yeah. book. And I, I thought that was pretty yeah. cool. And it was yeah. like Jeff Grubb in them doing it. Yeah. So I thought that was pretty yeah. neat. Um, okay, so Skunk City... Uh, comic Mad looks almost like Comixology. It looks like an online place where you can read like you know, Marvel and DC and all that. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't think that this ty- this this will be picked up by a certain amount of users, but it's not going to replace printed comics, I don't think. Yeah. But but a certain people want the convenience, and you know, and, and in some cases, like they're saying, you know, Marvel has a program where you pay a certain amount per year, and for every issue of their comics that's over six months old, you have access to everything. You know, so that's yeah. pretty appealing. But I still don't like the experience of reading that much. Yeah. So, Sly says, uh, "Zot Web Comics looks pretty good too." Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah that's that that link I posted. Yeah. yeah. So, um, it's interesting. Anyway, yeah, but I mean, I think comic books are. It's such a popular medium, you know, and it's not a genre. And I don't want to get too uh, with my bow tie here, but. Uh, a lot of people think of comics as a genre because superheroes were so intertwined with comics for such a long time. Um, but, you know, it's a medium, just like TV or radio yeah. or, or movies, and then there's oh, multiple genres within, yeah, yeah, multiple genres within it. So uh-huh. I wish, like, one thing where I think, like, uh, Japan has a leg up on us culturally, they're much more socially accepted in Japan. Like Like, businessmen will read manga on the way home on the train and nobody thinks anything of it mm-hmm. you know it's just it's just a different cultural perception whereas in america and it's starting to change but in america for a long time comic books were for kids and that's all there was to it yeah. so yeah so let's talk about some games man all right let's talk about i got a question D&D. for you oh i got yeah. a question for sure you. And we could talk about D, but sure. we were talking before the stream started about you know there's hey D is cool and everything but there's mm-hmm. other game systems out there Oh yeah. Uh, is it, what is the first role playing game you ever played? Was it D and D? Oh yeah, it was uh, back in '84 uh, when I well, I moved when my parents got jobs at NASA. They they moved to a place called Mims, Florida, and it's a real small little hick town. And uh, I was going to Mims Elementary School. Well. <laughs> my parents they were saving money to buy a house so eventually after about a year or two years they had a house built and I stayed with my grandmother uh, because she still lived in Mims and they they moved to a place called Port St. John which was actually it's huge now when when my when we first moved out there in the late 70s there were little cement poles sticking out of the ground about three feet with the uh, you know hand painted sign of the street on there so that's that's so when they moved out there i i finished my uh first grade year at mims elementary school then i moved back with my mother and father because my dad had was also finishing up his time in the in the military too and because he was in for a long time so then I went to a place called Fairgland Middle School, and that was at I was at first grade. Well, Port St. John had grown so much. They had our our because that's where basically where everybody moved from the from the shuttle program, and basically so many kids went to this school that they had to split everybody up because the school was just overpopulated. I remember there were portables everywhere. It was just it was horrible. I mean, it was just horrible. I, I, yeah, I went and, when my, in fifth yeah. grade, I went to a portable classroom. Yeah. I remember that well. Uh, imagine that by about 50 portables. And, and <laughs> there were so many portables, they couldn't even do recess anymore outside 
because wow. there were so many portables. So That's what they crazy. did was they, uh, in Port St. John, they, there was a main street called Faye Boulevard. So everybody on one side of Faye got shipped back north, and then uh, on the other, you know, if you were on the other side of Faye Boulevard, then you got to stay there at Fairlawn. So, of course, I was on the other side, so I had to, I had to get shipped about 40, 40 miles away to go to school. Oh so, man, how frustrating! So, yeah, so here I'm, I'm a new kid. I, in fact, I didn't know anybody at the old school. Now I really don't know anybody at the at the new school. And I remember for the first week that I was in this class, there were a couple kids that that were in a grade below me. I, I was in, I was in. By this time, this had gone on for a little while, and then uh, I'd say yeah. So I was at Fairglen for. Yeah, I was there for about a year. So I got shipped over here, and now now I see these kids, like, fake sword fighting and stuff on the playground. And I'm going, what are, they, what are these guys yeah, doing? Yeah, what is this? Yeah, yeah they're, they're, like, climbing, and, and they keep pulling out these pieces of paper and stuff. And I'm like, all right, what is this? So I actually went up to him when the teachers came out and said, okay, you know, recess is over, we're going back in. I went up to those kids, and I said, Hey, what are you guys? What are you guys doing? And they're like, "What do you want to know?" And and I, I said, I said, I yeah, I was wondering to know, you know, can I can I play too? I looked pretty fun there. And one kid, I remember the the smallest kid, his name uh, James it was his our DM. He says, "We're playing a game called Dungeons and Dragons. I don't know if you can play." And uh, <laughs> <laughs> he says, "I don't know." He says, "I don't know if you can play." And uh, then. Because he says you keep looking at us and stuff, and you're gonna make fun of us. I said I'm not gonna make fun of you, dude. I wanna, you know, yeah, I, wanna, like, I, wanna, I wanna play, man. Yeah. Show me so, the secret handshake. Yeah, I yeah. Wanna... The other kid there, and the other kid, which is Gary and Terry, they were pulling out their character sheets, and so it took James a little while to warm up to the new kid. But... I love. Hold on, I have to interrupt you. I love how you remember their names. Oh, I played with them till the the very. I mean, we played the same game for 15 years. Wow! I See, mean, this we is, played this classic. Is... We played classic D and D. And that day when I got home from school, I said, "Mom, can can you take me to?" We had Walden's books, man. We had Walden's books. I remember books. Walden's books, dude. And I love Walden's. Yeah, books. it was in the mall. So I said, "Mom, can you take me to Walden's book?" There's a game that I want to play called Dungeons and Dragons. And my mom said, "Sure, let's go take a look." So my dad wasn't home yet, and it was one of those "Don't tell your dad" things. So, you know, because. <laughs> You know, she says, "Oh, well, I've, we've heard bad things about that game." I'm, yeah. I'm like, oh, "Okay, so, but that's just the beginning." And I'll get back to that in just a second. So we went. I got a box. It was a. Uh, it was the red box, and then the Mincer red box. Yeah, and then we went to this little hot dog place, and I had it all ripped open, man, shit everywhere, and I said. I said, man, this is just not enough. I said, Mom, can we? Can I get some more? And she goes, yeah, sure. So we went back there, and I ended up getting, I got the uh, Keep on the Borderlands, and then I got... Uh, Did that not come the, with the Red Box? Uh, no. It had uh, okay. the Isle of Dread. I, mean, I got the Isle, the Isle of Dread. Dread. Yeah, the, the box set that I had came with a big book called In Search for Adventure. And okay. In Search for Adventure had uh it had about four or five adventures in it. And come to find out, I didn't find out till later on that it had Keep of the Borderlands already in that book. Already so Yeah. And it, it was now, awesome. Just so you know, that's the first module I ever played was Keep, Keep on the Borderlands. That's the same thing with us, man. Yeah, a lot Keep of people the, that was their first That is one, a yeah. huge, huge, huge people don't understand that is a massive adventure. I mean, it really is. And in fourth edition, they took Keep of the Borderlands, and then they kind of got rid of the outside area, and then they, you know, they they called it the Chaos something, and uh, it'll come to me in just a second. And in fourth edition, they kind of transitioned away from Keep on the Border. They still called it the Keep on the Borderlands, but then there were all these other tunnels, which was off of the original map. And, oh, okay. Uh, the Chaos. Yeah, they, the original but our, map. If if I remember right, I could be wrong. The original map had like caves of chaos. It looked like it was unfinished, like so you could add to it. If I, I don't know, yeah, yeah I do know the caves of chaos. Yeah. I know what you're talking about there. Yeah. Anyway, I, I may be remembering wrong. Yeah, the 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 map was it. There was an adventure at a keep, and then that was the main adventure. And then there were there was all these other, you know, there all these other caves and shit. Well, in fourth edition, they kind of destroy the original plot and that but anyways that's but anyways that and that's for another show but uh right. yeah keep of the borderlands uh i loved that uh i think the next thing we did was called rahaja 
and I believe that was B7, I think, B7's Rahaja. And that was a really fun, too, because that was sort of like Egyptian, uh, Egyptian type of lore, and that was really cool. Panthers and all that stuff, that was really fun. Mm-hmm. And uh, But we had the same campaign. We started...